Hello lovely people, I have more amplifiers to test. So today I will show you two of the cleanest amplifiers that I have and most likely one of the cleanest in general. So these amplifiers are quite old. These are Alpine V12s. One of them is uh, MRV F305 and the other one is MRV F409. So this 409 is a special edition and it is sometimes considered one of the first F1, but it's not officially F1, but some people say that it's kind of from F1 series because it's one of the best. Now, one interesting thing about this amplifier, specific one, was a special edition because if I'm gonna very gently lift it up, it has a copper back plate. So this is the only one that has this, and I believe there's a head unit with a copper backplate as well that has that all copper thingy. This one is just, it looks normal. There's, for this one, it, there's a bigger brother, I don't remember, it's 405 or a different number, which has a bit more power. So these amplifiers, they're not very powerful. I think this is like 40 watts, that one is 60 or 70, times four, obviously, but they're very, very clean. Now I'm doing the measurements, so we will be able to compare it directly to the down for sound for example one because i have it in my car installed and since i pulled this one out i have it the thing is i didn't measure this amplifier however i measured it only with two volts of input and with a scarlet focus right interface which was not as clean as this amplifier now i have this one which is the quantum asylum qa403 audio analyzer and this can give me all the way up to 8 volts in which is going to jump into the laptop and I'm going to show you how clean it is. Probably the most surprising part is that only now I realized that I haven't shared these amplifiers on YouTube. I did post them in Facebook Distortion Factory quite a while ago but I never shared this and the reason why I'm sharing it now because since I was working with the Easy Power Amplifier, the A10, and I heard that hiss noise, I kind of tried to figure out why that is, and if we can see that from the measurement, and what which measurement exactly is going to show us that there is noise audible in the amplifier and when it's not, because these Alpines are silent as nothing. So let's start with this one. This is the 409, the copper backplate, the bigger one, and this is THD versus power. So from this we can see that it is super, super clean, all the way up to close to 70 watts, and we have 1% THD at about 92 watts per, per channel. So we can say, uh, or like 14.4, it's like, four times 100 watts or four times 110 watts amplifier, which is quite normal. Now, the cleanliness part, uh, we see that the THD, the lowest it gets, it's very close to 0.02%, 0.021. So this level of distortion is on the DSPs. It's not like an amplifier. This amplifier is clean as a DSP. Helix DSP that I'm running, the Pro, uh, the distortion is somewhere here, 0.001. And the Easy DSP is somewhere here as well. So this amplifier is very, very close cleanliness wise to a proper DSP, which is I don't know if it's surprising for you, but it is surprising for me. Now, there are some amplifiers on the market that are as clean or cleaner than though than this one. So probably something like Micro Precision, like the mega expensive ones. The Helix C4, I do believe it's measuring something like 0 0.04, 0 0.05, somewhere there. So I think this is a tiny bit cleaner than the C4, but obviously the C4 will have a little bit more power. I, I do think that we have a C4 tested in the distortion factory. There we go, I found it. So Adam Daniels tested it uh, 0 0.01 so yeah not even close to this alpine this alpine is much cleaner than the c4 that cost mega money but yeah but the c4 has much more power like up to one percent 
like 160 watts or something. Yeah, much more powerful than that, but this is mega, mega clean. Now let's go to overlays and let's compare the F409 and the F305. So the 305 is the smaller one. So you can see it has a bit less power, uh, 50, 55 watts up to 1% 66. And this smaller amplifier, so this is THD plus noise. This small amplifier, you can see everything below like 12 watts of power. Uh, the smaller one is cleaner than the F409, but the F409 shines with a bit more power. So for like mid bass, which obviously you don't need that clean output for the mid bass, this is mega, mega clean. However, this one is perfect for tweeters and mid ranges. You can see like up to 13 watts, up to, up to 11 watts, this is much cleaner. So for tweeters that need like one, two or five watts, this smaller option, the 305 is ideal. Now, for comparison, let's have a look at the Downpour Sound A10. Ready? There you go. If you remember from the measurements, I said that it's hovering somewhere out like 0 0.02 from 0 0.01 up to 3, so something like this. So, yeah, you can see there is a massive difference. Now, power-wise, yes, the Downpour Sound has much more power, up to 1%. 120, so much more than any of those. However, these Alpines, even if they are super old, they're miles cleaner, much, much cleaner than the down for sound. If we're gonna have a look at the noise itself. So this is the noise of those amplifiers. The Alpines, you can see both of them have the same noise level. However, this down for sound, the noise, since it is noise dominated, is much, much higher compared to these. So I would imagine that this noise and maybe like signal to noise ratio is gonna cause that hissing. So from now on, what I'm gonna say is that if an amplifier is gonna have noise above 0.1%, that potentially might be audible as hiss, especially on the lower levels, like at one watt or something, that's close to 0 0.02. So yeah, this amplifier has audible noise, and these don't have audible noise at all. If we have a look at the THD, the THD itself is good. The THD, you can see, even the down for sound is very low on the distortion, especially at the lower wattage. So for like tweeters and stuff, like between one watt and five watts, it is cleaner THD wise than the F409. However, what breaks this amplifier is the actual noise. Let's go back to this and let's have a look at THD versus frequency. So just ignore this bump, it's just due to the measurement, but you can see that the F409, the bigger one, copper backplate, 0.02 all the way and it slightly rises to 0 0.1, 0 0.01 at the higher frequencies. Now the other one, the smaller brother, the 305, has even less distortion at the higher frequencies. You can see 0 0.005. This is at five watts of output power. This is mega, mega clean. This is, again, this is DSP level clean. These amplifiers are just amazing. Now let's have a look at one kilohertz spectrum. The F409, we can see the THD plus noise is 0 0.04. So this is at five watts of power. And the signal to noise ratio is 93 dB. The smaller amplifier has a signal to noise ratio of 94 dB, so slightly better. And the down for sound has 80. So that is the difference of close to 15 dB, like 14, 13 dB. If we're going to have a look at all of them here, this is the copper backplate, F409. This is the smaller one, 305. You can see the level of noise is the same and the harmonics are lower, especially the higher order harmonics are much lower than that one. And if I'm going to add the down for sound, it's this. So you can see that down for sound doesn't have higher harmonics, like a harmonic content, the THD is low. But the problem, as I mentioned in the initial review, is the actual level of noise. It's like 116 instead of these, 
128. So like 12, 13 dB difference. And this difference is apparently audible. So don't get me wrong, the downforce sound has low distortion. However, as I mentioned multiple times, what breaks that amplifier is actual the noise level. Now you cannot really say, maybe you could say that this is because the downforce sound is class D and these Alpine are class AB, but I've seen class D that measures similarly in noise level. So it's more to do with the actual amplifier design rather than the class. Let's have a look at other stuff. So in regards to the signal to noise ratio, uh, as I mentioned, like this one is 94. Now the F409, if you crank it up, up to like 13 volts, which is close to like 20 or 30 watts or something, this THD, you see, it was 93. If you crank it up, it's 102. So over 100 dB signal to noise ratio because the noise just goes down. So number eight, which is this one, you can see the noise is even lower if you crank it up. So this amplifier really, really shines at the higher power levels. It's, yeah, you can see the big, big massive difference. Now let's have a look at the intermodulation distortion. This is the 409. We see a little few bumps at the lower frequencies, very, very little, minus 113. Then the smaller amplifier, the 305, is this. So the smaller one has a little bit more at the bottom end. However, it is much, much cleaner at the top end. You can see this little mountain with this amplifier, it's much smaller. And finally, the down for sound is this. So yeah, again, the level is fine, but the problem is the noise, especially like at the higher frequencies. And we can see exactly the same if we have a look at the intermodulation of the higher frequencies. So this is the 409, which is, as I mentioned in the initial one, that good amplifiers have these harmonics at about 80 dB or less. This is the smaller amplifier, and you can see this one has much lower harmonics and less of them in general, so it is much cleaner. And again, if we're going to compare the down for sound, which is this one, yeah, you can see a clear, clear difference between these. Now... Yes, minus 60 versus minus 80, it is a difference. And when we saw at the lower frequencies, the intermodulation is not that big a difference, just the noise. But at the higher frequencies, there is more harmonics and they're higher in level compared to these super, super clean Alpines. And finally, what I wanted to show you is the frequency response. So this is the down for sound frequency response. Again, as I mentioned, don't look at the bottom end, look at the top end. And as I said, it does roll down uh, 2.3 dB, something like that, up to 20 kilohertz. Now let's have a look at the Alpines. This is one of them, the 409, and this is the other one. So you can see that this is 1 dB scale. So these amplifiers, one of them, the 409, drops 0 0.15 decibels at 45 kilohertz. The other one drops half a decibel. So yeah, those amplifiers can play, as I mentioned, all the way up to like 100K because I did measure 96 kilohertz sample rate, so it measures only up to 50K, but they can measure higher than that. Now, yes, with this one, for a class D, it's extremely difficult to catch up, but uh, yeah, there is a massive, massive difference between these two. So just to be clear, uh, I'm doing this video not to like bash on the down for sound amplifier because it's a totally different beast. I just wanted to show you the old school Alpines and how clean they are, even at this day and age, if you can find these Alpines for very, very cheap, you can have it for mids and tweets. And this is exactly what I'm going to do with a 305. So my plan for the 305, put it only on the mid-range and tweeters 
just to get rid of that hissing noise from the downforce sound because that hiss is audible only through the mids and tweets. It's not audible through the mid basses at all. So this is gonna save the day for me. And then I'm gonna have very close to perfect system. And if you wanna see more of these measurements, I highly recommend joining the Distortion Factory group because in that group, we have plenty of these measurements. Yeah, we have plenty of these. You can see like Eclipse, we have some JLs. We have plenty, plenty of very cool amplifier measurements. So visit this group just to see what was what is measuring good and what uh, is not so good. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching guys. And I will see you in the next one.